Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome. This is the second Sunday of Easter. My name is John Hudgston, and I'm the vicar of Hayfield, Chinley and Booksworth in the beautiful High Peak of Derbyshire. And I'm bringing you today a service of Holy Communion. It's for my folk who are in, in our parishes who can uh, see this either on Facebook or later on on YouTube. Or it's for anyone throughout the world who would love to join in. It's a communion service. You might find bread and wine helpful. I couldn't possibly comment, but uh, uh, that's what I'm doing today. I'm doing a Holy Communion service. Now, last week we had a few problems with the um, technology. So this week I'm keeping it simple until I've ironed out some of those problems. So it's just going to be me today, I'm afraid. Um, everybody else gets a rest. So just me today. But it's not just me. It's the whole community of heaven. It's the whole of the saints on earth who are gathering on the Lord's day to worship Jesus. And you know, my friends, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I will be there with them. I think that includes us here today. We are gathering and physical space and a space between here and Hayfield and Chinley and Booksworth and the rest of the world because there are people today, my friends, who are watching this in Brazil, in Mexico, in the United States, or France, all over the place. Um, it's no barrier to God. Distance is no barrier to God. So we are all together joining in this service of communion. Let's begin with a moment of quiet as we remember the Lord's presence with us now. He welcomes us into his presence. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We all probably will know this prayer and together we join in saying, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and wickedness and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. A moment of silence so that we might all confess our sins together. God hears us in the silence. His spirit searches our hearts. And now, with me, will you please pray? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. 
Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Gloria. Let's praise the Lord. We can't sing today, but we can say the Gloria enthusiastically. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The special prayer. In the Church of England we call it the Collect, the special prayer for today. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as people are joining us all over Britain and all over the world, I want to say welcome and thank you for joining us in our service of communion today. Now we come to our first reading. It's from the uh, book of the Acts of the Apostles. And it's a set reading that the Church of England says we must read today. I don't know why they do it really, because we're kind of preempting Pentecost, but there we are. Lots of things that the Church of England do uh, are beyond my understanding, quite honestly. But here we go. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power and wonders and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power for David says according concerning him I saw the Lord always before me he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced moreover my flesh will live in hope for you will not Abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, for you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with, sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades. He, nor did his flesh, experience corruption. This Jesus, God, raised up. And of all that, 
we are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here's the gospel reading. First an acclamation. At the end of the acclamation, we can all say, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop believing and stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Well, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. May I speak and may we all hear in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Amen. So here we are. Week four of lockdown. Most of us just longing for it to end. But we know it can't end until the NHS is assured that it can handle the casualties. A friend of mine uh, who goes to Bikers Church uh, told me this week that he really hates it 
because it feels like being confined in prison. Others say it has the flavour of the Easter tomb. But need that be the case? Could there be something good and productive that comes out of this time? We're all waiting in expectation for the door to open and for us to get our new lives back. But until that happens, what will happen to us? Now, last week, uh, our gospel reading for Easter Day centred upon Jesus who had burst free from death. He burst free from the grave clothes that had tightly bound him like a mummy. He had burst free from a two-ton stone blocking the entrance. And he's burst free from the authority of the Roman seal which was placed on the tomb. And he's burst free from the Roman guards there to protect the tomb and to stop anyone getting in and nicking the body. Little did they expect that someone would be coming out first. He's also burst free from the snare of death itself. The death of higher and lower bodily function ceasing from heart beat and breathing to metabolic function all breaking down and the life of his very own cells deteriorating in the Middle Eastern conditions. From all of this, Jesus burst free. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Now do not think that this was a metaphor, a metaphor for the disciples who somehow regained their faith in a dead Jesus. There is no implication at all in early church history that this was even thought of. This is a real event, a real bursting back to life, and nothing else could account for the empty tomb and the demoralised band of disciples changing their lives. Do you know what? I came across a brilliant poem this week about that very thing. It's called Seven Stanzas at Easter and it's by John Updike. Have a listen to this. It's fantastic. Make no mistake. If he rose at all, it was as his body. If the cell's disillusion did not reverse, the molecule re-knit, the amino acids rekindle, the church will fall. It was not as the flowers, each soft spring recurrent. It was not as his spirit in the mouths and fuddled eyes of the eleven apostles. It was at it was as his flesh, ours. The same hinged thumbs and toes, the same valved heart that pierced, died, withered, paused, and then regathered out of enduring might, new strength to exercise. Let us not mock God with Metaphor, analogy, sidestepping, transcendence, making of the event a parable, a sign painted in the face, in the faded credulity of earlier ages. Let us walk through the door. The stone is rolled back. Not papier-mâché. Not a stone in a story, but the vast rock of materiality that in the slow grinding of time will eclipse for each of us the wide light of day.
And if we have an angel at the tomb, make it a real angel. Weighty with Max Planck's quanta, vivid with hair, opaque in the dawn light, robed in real linen, spun on a definite loom. Let us not seek to make it less monstrous, for our own convenience, our own sense of beauty, lest awakened in one unthinkable hour, we are embarrassed by the miracle and crushed by remonstrance. Wow! Brilliant, amazing stuff. I wish I'd seen that poem earlier. Now in our gospel reading today, the first part focuses on Jesus bursting in on the disciples who were cowering, scared out of their skins because they thought they might be next. Traced, detected, door kicked in, arrested, dragged to a kangaroo court and dead. So they're hiding in secret. In secret, doors barred. Barred and locked, like today, our brothers and sisters in the underground church are hiding from the authorities of their nations. Millions of them in Iran and China and North Korea and Saudi Arabia. I can tell you about Saudi Arabia. I've been there. Why is the West not standing up for these? Why are our bishops not speaking out for them as much as they should be? So there they are, waiting for the knock on the door out of nowhere, the battering ram. And then, unexpectedly, without warning, comes Jesus. In resurrection life, he bursts into the room. The locked room. No knock on the door from him. He just appears. The disciples are clearly terrified. Wouldn't you be? I would. And they're terrified as Jesus reassures them. What would you have thought? No, it really is him. It's no imposter. These are the wounds, he shows them, of the instrument of his death. He bids them shalom, peace, well-being symbolically breathes on them, foreshadowing the giving of the Holy Spirit and the sound of the wind of Pentecost. And he points to the ministry that they will have as the people of God, the people of God who will soon burst into the first century world, turning it upside down, boldly declaring the forgiveness he has wrought on the cross. That is their destiny. Not to be an institution. My goodness me, what has the Church of England done? But to be a movement of people changed by Jesus. That is what the church is meant to be. But wait. There's one missing when Jesus appears. One missing. Of course, we know the story. It's Tomo. Thomas, the twin. And when his brothers tell him, his Christian brothers, tell him what they have seen, you can see in the story how he's charged with emotion. Some people think he's angry. No, he might well be. He's angry because he's missed out. Do you know, I, I think I might feel that myself. If I'd missed out on something fantastic, I'd be like, Henry, why wasn't I there? Others say he's like a modern rational man and reckons the disciples have deluded themselves into belief and he's not going to believe until he has solid, irrefutable proof. He doesn't just want to see Jesus in case this is hysteria. 
He wants to actually feel and touch him in his material flesh, his wounds. Seeing is believing is not good enough for Thomas. Solid material touch, the proof is what he wants. Do you know what? He's so much like people are today. It's not just that he can't believe. It's that he won't believe. He won't believe. And you know what? There are some people who are carrying all kinds of emotions inside of themselves. Maybe they've been abused. Maybe the church has done them a wrong. Maybe they feel God has let them down. And who can blame them for feeling that? Especially when they've lost loved ones during a pandemic like this. But Thomas, he can't. No, he won't believe. It's not just doubt. It's anger. Why were you not there for me? Many people out there do not believe, not because they can't, but they do not believe because they don't want to believe, because there's something emotional going on inside of them. I wonder what's happened if you're watching this and you have a blockage with God. What is the thing that has happened that is blocking your relationship with him? I don't think it's necessarily anything logical about you can't believe. I think it might be that you won't allow yourself to believe. Unless I see the marks, I won't believe. So less than a week, after Thomas and the other disciples have had their exchange, they are back behind locked doors. And it's where we are today. A week after Easter, locked in. Some of us frightened about what is out there, like surely they were. They were not changed all at once. And into the confusion and conflicting opinions burst Jesus. His body's taken on remarkable properties and he can move through solid objects now if you think that this is crazy and unscientific then think again our understanding of science and the possibilities that exist with quantum physics tells us the world is far more variable than the old cause and effect thinking of physics once determined we live in a universe where quantum physics demonstrates that matter can be a particle and a wave at the same time. How crazy is that? We live in a universe where quantum physics demonstrates that matter can be something of a non-local nature, meaning that particles can be correlated with each other in ways that don't respect distance in space or don't respect the speed of light. Poor old Einstein, he didn't know that, did he? And God has made a remarkable universe with all kinds of things that we once thought were impossible, must be impossible, being real and actual and beyond most people's imagination. But now, and only just now, being discovered by science. But it doesn't need us to believe in quantum physics when we believe in a creator God who made everything and who can recreate at will. Jesus's newly created body is recognisable. It looks like him. It speaks and sounds like him. It behaves like him. It feels like him as Thomas touches his wounds, wounds which once were fatal, wounds which are now no longer the bringer of death, but 
evidence that death no longer holds the one who was once its victim. The victim who has burst the chains of death. Thomas sees. It really is him. It is him. And Thomas, the angry, the willful doubter, makes his confession that Jesus is not just his Lord, but that he is his God too. It's not yet like it is with us that it's not yet. It's not yet, but we can see it building. The disciples will burst upon the world from that locked room, filled with the spirit of the resurrected Jesus. The locked room is an opportunity for Jesus and them to remake their relationship. And do you know what, brothers and sisters? The locked rooms we are in, the locked houses, are our opportunity to remake our relationship with the living Jesus and know him in his risen power and to listen to what he has to say to us. But for now, they're going to encounter him here in the locked room and there in all kinds of unexpected places. He will build their faith, their trust, their confidence and heal their wounds, their psychological wounds. And they will realise more and more that he actually is who he said he is. We too are in that period of not yet. It's not yet time for us to go out. We're not allowed. So let's use this time profitably to get closer to the risen Jesus. He will come to us in unexpected ways. He will build our faith. He will show us new things. And then he will unleash us on the world to proclaim him as Lord and Saviour. For that is his will and that is our destiny and brothers and sisters do not think you've had everything stripped away from you because you're locked in no you haven't you now have the opportunity to meet with the risen lord and i hope that you will take it in jesus name amen We're going straight to a time of prayer and intercession. When I say the words, we pray to the Father, will you please respond, hear our prayer. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father, that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection, even when we're locked in our homes. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find strength in the good news of Easter. We pray for our brothers and sisters in China, North Korea, Saudi Arabia, Iran, other Islamic regimes. We thank you for the way in which you come to them, Lord, behind their locked doors, as they meet together or alone. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, we pray for those who are able, serving our communities. For those going out, running errands, getting shopping. 
for those caring for the housebound. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That he may guide and strengthen doctors, nurses, care workers, ambulance crews and all key workers as we battle coronavirus. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That by his power, war and famine may cease through all the world. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Africa, who not only are having to deal with coronavirus, but also a plague of locusts eating the crops, bringing famine. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, those suffering from COVID-19, those who cannot get treatment because of this virus, the weak and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them be with those who are chaplains, coming alongside them, to accompany them in the last moments of their lives. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That according to his promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised up on the last day. And that those in mourning, particularly in our communities, may find hope in the resurrected Jesus. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That he may send in due course the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people once we are let out so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and have brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that, as by his death has called us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to the peace. Now we can't shake hands or hug and, or anything like that. But what I do want to say is, after the service, give someone a phone call and wish them God's peace being with them. OK, so the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We come now to our communion and I'm going to get my bread and wine and you may want to have bread and wine yourself. you've got a book at home it's Eucharistic Prayer A and uh, we're using a preface for Easter so there'll be some of it missed out but just join in as you can and if you can't remember the words just echo what I say because the Eucharistic prayer is not the prayer for the vicar the priest the clergyman the Eucharistic prayer is for the whole congregation the whole congregation and it's not me that consecrates bread and wine, it's God as we invoke him to do so from wherever we are. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because through him you have given us eternal life and delivered us from the bondage of sin and the fear of death into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that, by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you. Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. You should all know the next part. It's the Lord's Prayer. It's the traditional words, and we're going to say them together. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Receive his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Jesus died. Jesus died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving the body of christ keep me in eternal life amen
blood of Christ keep me in eternal life. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Just stop for a moment. Just sense the presence of Jesus with you. I can feel his presence here. Lord comes to us, he promised he would. Lord God our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin, and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory amen just as we come to the end of the service please feel free to share it with anybody who you think might find it helpful okay if you think it's rubbish don't share it but if you think it might help someone share it please Also, I want to say, if there's anyone out there, and there are a few people contacting me like this, and I'm very happy for them to do it. If you, if you need a chat because you're feeling lonely, shut in, isolated, you, you might have just gone through, like some have, a very difficult time. Do pick up the phone, okay? I've got time for you, all right? So pick up the phone and, and I will chat with you, all right? God bless you. Here is the blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So, if you're working, go in peace. If you are confined to quarters, remain in peace. To love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I just want to say we've done it very simply uh, this uh, morning. Um, because we had too many technical hitches and it didn't really flow well last week. The contributions were great, but the technology at my end was letting us down. Um, I'm going to try and find a better way of doing things so that we can still involve uh, other people. All right. But for now, this has been really just to uh, regroup and to, uh, and to build things up again. And we'll see if we can do it better in the future. Goodbye. God bless you. And thank you for joining me here in Hayfield Vicarage for the service of Holy Communion, accompanied by saints and angels throughout the whole of creation. Amen. Goodbye. God bless you. I'm going to give Mary her Holy Communion now. But she doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs>